Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another PPA Imaging USA Unpacked. Um, today we have our special guest and friend, Mr. Tom Munoz. Tom, thank you Hola. so much for joining us today. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be here, uh, and uh, looking looking forward to hearing any questions or feedback from from the people that are already in the group. So, let's get started. Awesome. Well, you heard it, everybody. Tom is here for you. So if you have any questions at all, you'll see in your control panel that you can put the questions in there, and I'll do my best to get to as many as possible. Um, so before we even go any further, I want to thank everyone in the chat today. So Andrea, Andy, um, Audrey, Jessica's here. Thank you for joining us. Um, John Nadar, Nadar is here. Karen is here. Thank you for joining. Lawrence here, Paul's here, Raphael, Sabrina, and Tony. Awesome. So we got a packed house today. All right. <laughs> Let the healing begin. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to start off on a good note. Let's do that. Let's say um, I want to share with you, Tom, a few of the survey comments that I found valuable and I, I found interesting. I think you should hear back from the audience a little bit. Sweet. Yep. So um, one comment we have from one who attended the class. Amazing class, exclamation, exclamation. Excellent information. Ray and Tom kept the class engaged and wanting to hear more. Great teachers and great class, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. I hope they will do it again, exclamation, exclamation. That's one comment we got. So, sure. Yeah, that was, that was probably my mom though, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, that, that's super cool, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Love to hear photographers go out that way because they they commented in the survey, they sat in the class, and to get that kind of feedback, that's that's amazing. So no. Um, yeah. another one. Uh, this session exceeded all ex expectations. Value at every second, two powerhouses presenting. Wow, that's huge. And I know our audience at Imaging USA. They come there for the knowledge. They come there to be inspired. And if you're not doing a great job, they will let us know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, listen, I've, I've been, I don't think I've missed an Imaging USA uh, since I was 18 years old. I've been to every single imaging. I've, I competed in every IP, you know, uh, you know, in a yearly annual competition. And um, I would have to say that PPA, um, even even though I grew up in the in the world of wedding photography and and actually professional photography, um, my passion and love for pushing the art definitely came from PPA. You know, my family had a great business sense and taught us how to take care of people, but but that passion, right, for the for the imagery really came from PPA, and it has transformed our business and pretty much the model, which continues to allow us to grow and, and probably one of the most challenging uh, competitive uh, wedding and event markets in the country. Yeah, absolutely. You know, thank you for, for sharing that. Thank you for saying that. I mean, you guys um, contribute to us as well, you know, because you're inspiring many of the members and setting a nice bar for them to see what it's like to be an elite, one of the best of the best in the photography community. So, you know, thank you for doing what you guys do as well. Oh man, thank you. No, you know when 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 you say that, you know I'm 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 now in my 40s, so they don't tell you that you know when you're in your 40s, you you think about 18 just as like you thought about yesterday. It's like there's there's no real difference in in time. And you know I remember when I first entered uh, my first competition, I think my highest score was like a 74 on my first sprint. And you know when 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 you get compliments like that, it's because uh, I I I still am. I still am learning. Like I'm, you know what I mean. And when you hear that, it's, it's it's nice to hear. But I think keeping that mentality of, you know, we we want to continue to be a student. We want to constantly know that we don't know everything. And um, you know, nothing helps you do that better than sharing with other people because it makes you really think about what what you are doing before you have to go and talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that 100. percent And you guys show that. Like, I remember during COVID. A lot of photographers are trying to find out what can I do? How can I stay afloat? Where's photography now with COVID? 
and you guys have kind of had a, a good streak. You found a way during COVID to keep good value. You know, people were still getting married and you, you, you found a way to make it work. So yeah, tell us a little bit about that. How do you guys continue to pivot in moments like that? Um, is, is the question more like what, how did we decide, what did we decide to do during COVID or more like what is the, 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 the thought process of, of the business, you know, in today. So are you talking about then or, or kind of bigger picture? Yeah, I have the bigger picture because it could be any situation. You would have to correct transition to the market. So, you know, correct. That's, that's what so, we're so, you know, um, I think one of the things that's unique about our business is culturally, um, you know, we're, you know, my grandfather's from Cuba, you know, when, you know, he, he had photography businesses, uh, in, in Cuba and he did really well. And, uh, when Castro came into power, uh, they kind of changed the whole, uh, idea of staying there and he had to come, he had to come here to this country. He didn't speak the language and, um, my dad said he would go, you know, door to door and literally in the projects and asking people if they want to have a family portrait done or a baby picture done. He would just go knocking door to door. And one of the things in, in how we grew up, you know, our studio, we did passport photos. You know, we do, we did any copy work, you know, communion, schools, weddings, events, quinces, mitzvahs, you name it. So, you know, the, the idea of, you know, not you know trying to be as diverse as possible um you know my grandfather says stories about how he you know would save the ketchup packets and from mcdonald's just in case you know so <laughs> right but but what i think that does is it gives a certain spirit to how you approach your business and it 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 makes you a little bit more um more like a hunter right like you have to provide for your family so you, you want to take this skill set that you that you have and be able to pivot. So when you like go to PPA and you educate yourself not just in what you like to learn about, but all different parts of photography. You know, being you know, being primarily known for a majority of, for the wedding work, you know, what saved us during COVID was my schoolwork. Right? Like so it was having those school contracts. So when the senior portraits came around, they were able to come to the studio and since they had nothing else to do, the sales were like double what they normally were, right? Because the, the, they were like excited to be there, right? So it was a really tough situation. But for me, I was like, this is incredible. Like the, it was just a blessing because we had literally 1,200 portraits to do over a three month span. Wow. Right. And, and, and they all came to our studio. And then I remember we were going and we were trying to think of anything we could to generate revenue. So like for graduations, we were driving to people's houses and taking pictures of them in their front, in, in front, in their front yard. You know, we actually organized uh, with a couple of the high schools, the grad, the, the social distancing, like graduations where we did it through a drive through. So we had a photo station, they drove in, they were given all different stuff. People were there, you know, cheering them on like a little drive through line. And then they got to a point where they jumped out of the car and they would jump up on a platform in front of the school outdoors. Wow. And we did port, we did their graduation portraits, but it was all done through a drive through. Um, you know, we awesome. went back, you know, we went back to all the weddings that we had and then gave promotions for people at a discount to re you know, to, to buy more prints. We went to our, all of our old weddings that didn't order an album. And then we started designing albums and saying, Hey, it's, you know, for 25% off, would you guys like to have this album? Right. So we, we were, we having the diversity in the business allowed us to generate revenue from uh, past photos, not even past clients, past pictures we took like, and nobody did anything with them. And, um, you know, I, and that's, and, and it taught us a lot and it really has made us really think about moving forward. Um, you know, this market is constantly changing the, the wedding and event market, the deliverables are, are, are constantly changing. Um, what, you know, people sometimes now just want digitals. How are we going to handle that? How are we going to be able to sell digital only prints and still make enough money to support, you know, the 25 uh, people I have working in the building? So, yeah, right. uh, yeah, 
You know, it, it, you, you got to be hungry, but you got to invest in yourself and having the education and the skill set. So when things get challenging, you know, I think one another thing is, is wedding photography kind of trains you to be a great portrait artist, a great family. You know, you can take pictures of babies. You can do commercial work. You can do product work. You can do architectural work, right? You, you, you run social events. So, you know, having that skill set is, is very, it's very easy to do. You know, I think a great wedding photographer can almost do anything, um, it, you know, in the, in the photographic world. Yeah, you can adapt. You can adapt to each environment, each lighting situation, work with different people, communicate with different styles of people. That's a good wedding photographer, right before you get yeah. behind that camera. You're like the MacGyver of photography. Wedding photographers are the, <laughs> you know, they're the, they're the guys that they drop off in the middle, you know, out of a helicopter with, uh, you know, a tooth, a, a toothbrush and a pair of boxers, you know. <laughs> right, well, hopefully you're helicopters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, awesome. exactly. Well, Tom, your your session was titled Luxury Weddings, uh, the merging of two worlds, mastering creative lighting for photo and video. Um, now, video is becoming more and more common, especially with weddings. Videos has kind of always been there. What advice would you give to a, a wedding photographer that's considering incorporating video into their business who has never shot before, potentially? How should they start? be intentional right like think mr miyagi right you know karate yes karate no you do in the middle you're gonna get squished like a grape and you might have a really great brand as a photographer and when you um, add on additional services if the additional services and the, and the and the product that's being produced is not on par with what you were doing with your photo brand you could potentially, by trying to add an additional revenue stream, really damage your brand. And I and so I would say that the first thing you want to do is you want to find partners, right, aligned, that have the same values, right, and and are kind of where you are in your vision of of the type of work that you want to produce and the type of market you want to compete in. Um, so you know, partnership is is great and. You know, one of one of the things that we we do is we train our teams, right? And we work together. Um, you know, so the approach that we take when we photo when when I show up to a wedding is the photographer, right, is the director of photography for the event, and um, we kind of take a commercial approach, right? So when we're setting up each individual scene, the photographer is already communicating, hey, where, who is adding the light? Where is it coming from? What's the color temperature? What are the shooting angles? Who's going to be when and where? Because now you're, when, you, when you photograph that way and in, 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 in film, you're twice as fast. Because rather than them doing their thing and you doing your thing, you're doing it, you're doing it together as one team. Um, and then the next advice I would be is walk, you know, walk before you run, you know, just do get a good looking video, right? Like get, go to your current wedding clients and say, Hey, we're in, you know, do you do the ones that are coming up in two weeks that didn't hire anybody that wasn't going to hire anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And say, Hey, we're adding on, we're adding on this. We're going to do a little, you know, highlight, right. And do it for free. Right. You, like, you, like what, just, get it done and learn how to create a, the, the the product that you want to have and then don't be afraid to outsource right like don't be afraid to you know develop your editing team um that that you send the things to but again you got to hold their hand you got to develop that style you the you know what, what what feel do i want from my films right do i like this the warm and antique or are you going to develop different like styles of edits and and you're going to find that once you have the ability to and you got that system down and you can do one then you'll be able to do two then you'll be able to do four then you're going to be able then at the end of the year now you're like oh my gosh i got 100 i got 100 wedding video contracts how did that happen but just like a little bit in each direction but making it about the quality and the experience and making sure you're trying to create both the photo and video to have um, 
a, a similar brand presence. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. You want to have that same look and feel throughout that story continues to be right. the same, same journey. And, and, it's, and it's real easy to do when your photographer is working as the director of photography. When you're the photographer is setting up the, the lighting crew, like if, the, if, if I have a, a team of six guys on a job, right? The video assistants and the photo assistants are actually just working together. Right? Everybody is working together. Yeah. And when the lighting is the same and I don't have to use a flash, right? Then the video is going to be the same because essentially they're just taking a lot more pictures than I am. Right. They're just moving. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they, they're, they're still, they're doing the same thing. They just take a lot more. They take, <laughs> they take about 60 a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's a good hat to have. Like, I don't think a lot of photographers think I'm the DP. I'm the director of photography. Right. I'm controlling the set. If I want this shot, I don't necessarily have to shoot it, but my staff needs to know what I'm looking for to get what I want. I think that's help, that's help, very helpful. And, and and another thing is is this approach the the director the the DP's approach is not to tell everybody what to do right but to help them do what they need to do hmm. right like we when when even when when I when I show up to a wedding and it's not my cinematic team that's doing the video and I've never worked with them before, I will go up to that cinematographer and introduce myself and tell him that my goal for today is, is that he has the best film he's ever done. Love it. That's just And I'm gonna right do there. right there. And yeah. and if you and and I say, listen, I understand you need to get things live. I can re-simulate. So I'm gonna do it for you and then I'll do it for me. You can go first and I'll direct them through all of the motion. So you tell a cinematographer that you're going to be directing the client and speaking to them and setting up the lighting and making sure that, that you're, that everything is flowing together. Like by the end, I, by the end of the night, you know, they, they want to be your best friend, right? Yeah. Like I actually have some, I have people that I do video I've done videos with that have their own businesses. And, and after they have worked with our team, they're like, I want to just come and incorporate our business into yours. Like I, I this is how I want to work every weekend. And it, and, and the funny thing, even though Ray um, has a, its own separate business, we have, you know, we're, we're like family throughout the years. I've been doing events with him for decades. And, um, and, and that's, and that's the, the, the approach that, that we have. And even Ray says, he's like, bro, I could do this for the rest of my life if I had photographers like you guys every weekend. Because, because what kills me is I can't do my job when a photographer has his own agenda. And for some reason, um, I think a lot of photographers don't give respect to the cinematographers as much as they should. And, um, and you know, for me, I want to help everybody at the event. I want to make sure that they do their best job because, in return, they're going to help me do my best job. Right. Creative minds working together for the same goal, which is the client. Yes, sir. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What if someone like, you know, luxury weddings is a is a big deal. How can someone like, not on a luxury wedding budget, get that luxury wedding experience? Is it even possible? I well. Are you talking about the client? Yeah, the client. You know, because the luxury oh. weddings they have like they feel like a cinematic movie when you and Ray work together. That's a totally different experience. It, I'm, I'm the the luxury wedding experience does not have to be at a fancy place. You set the tone as the photographer, right? When when we as soon as we enter the room and we start doing what we're doing, it becomes very apparent that we are experts at what we do and that we're there to do our best for them. Right? Like, so, you know, I've done some really fancy, like I, I did a, a wedding that we shared with, uh, at imaging, you know, it was, you know, it was close to a $50 million event. Wow. Right. And the bride got ready in a tent, right. <laughs> in, a, in a tent and there were zero windows. None, right? Wow. Now, now, how do we how do we create that luxury look? Well, 
it's in the lighting and it's in the the story that you tell so you know i could have a plain clean background but if i have gorgeous light on a subject that that subject is gorgeous then then i don't need a background in fact when i photograph i'll get a little a little more on the you know the technical side um i rarely go above f2 on a wedding day rarely wow yeah right rarely so you know i spend a majority of my time between one two and one six and like the focus is on the subject so the background is secondary but when the quality of light and how you handled the subject and the expression and the body position and the flow and and what that image is telling you know that's where that's where you can see quality when you don't you don't need millions of dollars in the background to do it right right you can feel it you can feel it in the mm -hmm. tech awesome well i want to yep. remind our audience members if you got questions come on bring them on this is a great opportunity to pick tom's brain i can do it all day with him but I'm trying to be courteous and share. So, here's some questions yeah, from guys. the audience for you, Tom. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for, I'm here for you guys. I actually had to change my flight um, uh, to make sure that we had just enough time. So, um, please, yeah, ask away. And again, it, even if it isn't in the wedding um, luxury market questions, or if it's just of your photography business in general, um, you know, bring them. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Tom. Well, one question we have for you. Um, what's next in terms of your future endeavors? Ooh. Um, well, uh, on, a, on, a business, on a business side, um, we are growing our uh, – so in the school photography side, we've made a decision to grow that department, and we're going to be getting pretty aggressive on um, expand, expanding our reach and – uh, in our in our area um, our for our wedding and event um, uh, side of our business you know we want to continue to grow the, the 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 market that we have uh, for the you know upper upper you know middle high um, you know events um, but we're really now pushing forward more on an international basis to uh, do the the big production weddings, right? Like, I, I I love the challenge of when you're running a crew of you know 16 people and there is you know five to 700 people at an event and you're dealing with all of this chaos and stress and super high expectation, and to be able to like put that all together and have and do it with like and my brothers like I would say my brothers my photographers are like my brothers so it's uh that well they are and and the ones that aren't blood related have become like my brother so you know it's like you know we're, we're playing a game you know and 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 our goal is to play this game better than anybody else can in the world and that has that has been my goal since i was 18 years old and i'm not saying i've gotten there i'm just telling you what the goal is <laughs> awesome thank you for sharing that uh another question for you from Raphael. he wants to know how do you deal with focusing shooting in 1.8 that little bit of shallow depth of field man that's a tough one actually i'm gonna bag it up i'm i do walking down the aisles at 1.2 and if you would like to see some examples of that you can look at the wedding i just did a couple of days ago um uh on facebook on uh actually i, I believe it's posted on my facebook so it's tom munoz um but a majority of all of those photos were literally like under 1.6 so I would say I'm, I'm using a Sony Alpha. Um, when I when now this is prior to uh, uh, prior to mirrorless. So this is SLR days. I used another brand of camera. And when I would photograph with my 85 1.2, I would never be able to get anything in focus. Like I never had the eyeballs in focus. And I think one of the things that has really changed is. Now that we're working with mirrorless sensors that are focusing on the sensor itself, and we can literally tell it which eye has priority, and it will keep the focus on the eyeball, right, for like every single frame, 
right? It gives me the ability and, and like even look at it. Like if you, if you go like, I'm telling you, just go look at the bride walking down the aisle and the groom walking down the aisle. That's shot at 1.2, but it makes the church almost look like a background, right? It almost gives it a look that I'm shooting with like a medium or a large format. It, and when you, when you photograph that way, it looks so different than this, right? Because this is never optically going to be able to give us the depth of field that a larger format uh, sensor can give us because the smaller the sensor, the more depth of field. So, you know, that's why back in the, when you shot on eight by 10, you know, glass plates for you to get the eye, the, both eyeballs in focus, you had to be at like F22. <laughs> I don't miss those days. I didn't touch photography back then. I'm spoiled. <laughs> I'm yeah. So I would, I would, I would say, I would say it's, it's not a concern. Oh, and I would also say, um, when I shot zoom lenses, I could never really rely on 2.8 or the wide open being really sharp, especially from edge to edge. So another thing that we did is we eliminated all of the zooms from all of our photographers. So we only shoot with prime lenses. And when you start shooting with prime high quality lenses and you're say a 135 uh, millimeter 1.8, you can shoot a bridal party of 20 people. And if you have them positioned just properly, you will have eyelashes on the edges of every person all the way to the middle, Yes. which you yes. can't do with a zoom lens. Just the way that the focusing changes, the, uh, for me, primes are, primes are the way to go. And it gives you the ability to photograph in that no man's land where we where when we shot film we would never dare go yeah i hope we get to that point i, I would love to see some zoom lenses that can get down to 1.8 1.2 and have that quality you, you know the the can i know that canon has a real that they're what 28 to 70 f2 i believe um is a very very is a very nice lens but it's like a monster like of a, a, a it's a it's a big it's a big boy of a lens um for me when I have to pre-think about where I'm going to be, by, and you have to do that when you're using prime lenses, I find myself to be a much more, uh, much more of a precision photographer. I'm, I'm much more intentional, right? I, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm doing, and, and because I have to think a little bit more prior to, it, for me, I feel I get a better result at the end. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's some discipline that comes with that, and you know that lens so well, you kind of know where you need to be, as far as movement goes, I think every every photographer should have at least one prime. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have six. So um. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of that, yeah. I have a question about that. Someone says in the in the comments, um, you can only take one lens and one camera body to shoot. What do you take? Fifty. Nifty fifty. N yeah, fifty one point two. I do ninety five percent of my wedding within fifty. Yeah, can't go wrong. And, and and then if I said a camera body, it would be a like I I love my Alpha, like like the the Sony A1. I've been shooting it for a while now. I mean, the it does way more than than I needed to do, but it's it's focusing is great. The thing it's even the, you know the Sony bodies they look really similar, but it's like the difference between like having like a Hyundai and a Ferrari. And they look exactly the same, but they operate completely different, completely differently. Um, and I think having a really high megapixel camera would uh, is an advantage because I think if you're only going to bring one lens, and this is something I do all the time, is I'll use my 50 and then I'll punch in, and I have a like a button programmed on my lens, so I hit a button and it turns that 50 into like an 85, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I'm still at 20 something megapixels, like, right? Like, so I got, I got everything I need, but rather than changing lenses, if I'm on a dance floor and I'm like, I do the 50 and then I'll pop it into 85 and get in, in and get in a little bit closer, just, just with a button. Nice. Um, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here, Tom. Um, do you have a ritual that you do before you get on set to shoot? So how do you prepare for your shoot? So we, we kind of touched a little bit about this before we started talking. So, um, you know, on the, on the morning, on the mornings of my, of my weddings, I do tend to get up uh, pretty early. Um, and, uh, I, I usually go to a hot yoga class before a wedding. Um, I'm, I make sure that I eat a very large, healthy, like 
meal that's going to have like a lot of calories, uh, good calories in it before I, uh, I get to the, I get to the wedding. Um, I also, uh, I don't like to drive, uh, to the wedding. So when, uh, when my crew gets there, I actually sit, I get, I get in and I start diving into my timeline and I start reviewing that timeline with my team and I try to get them excited about what we're going to do and what we're going to do differently today and um, kind of reminding everybody of what their roles are and also kind of empowering them because at that moment some of the guys will be like yo can I do this today can I do this today do you mind if, if I can have this you know responsibility and when I hear that I get so proud because you know I'm building my team right like I, 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 I want them to not look at this like it's a job, right? I want them to be passionate about this um, because like, at least in, I, I heard something, uh, uh, not uh, a quote uh, just recently. It says, the man who loves to walk will walk further than the man who loves the destination. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> right? So, and, and, and since there is no end to this, I just want to continue to love to walk this walk. I want, I want to be excited about this wedding today. I want to make sure that I connect with all of the people that were at that wedding, share them the images right away, create the best experience. Cause I find that the difference in the, the success of your marketing, the, uh, the success of your client experience is not a big difference between one photographer and the next. It's really probably only a couple little bitty things, but those little bitty things are the bigger things, right? Like texting the bride the next following morning, here are some of the images, right? Like, what do I get right away? Oh my, these are amazing. I love you. Is there, and then I'm like, hey, by the way, do you, do you mind doing a favor for me? And they're like, what, what can we do? And it's like, do you mind writing a review here and maybe here? Right. It's, it's, it's sending, it's texting the planner in the morning being like, Hey, thank you so much. And the entertainment company and getting them those photos and, you know, having that spirit when you're on the job that you're there to help everyone, right? It's not your agenda. You're there for the wedding and you're there to serve. And if you're there to serve, like, I'm just, you're, you're going to have more fun. You're going to have better pictures and you're, you're going to enjoy what you do way more. And, you know, and you do that for long enough every hotel you walk into every you know <laughs> catering space you walk into people are coming up and shaking your hand and giving you a hug and asking you how your family is and how they can help you so i'm i'm a, I'm a true believer in in that kind of thinking absolutely i think you've shown that because outside of photography there's a product that intrigued me that you guys developed called lvl up yep level up yeah level up <laughs> And because I'm the kind of person that doesn't have access to a studio all the time, but I want to be able to practice. I want to make good quality work. If I have a friend or a guest or someone I trust to come to my home, I want to have a good experience for them. And I saw the LVL. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's an, in, it's an interesting how that kind of came about. Um, there are certain things that come to you in your life that you just, there's you almost feel like you have no choice, but you have to run this through because you believe so passionately in it. Um, you know, when I first started, uh, getting into the commercial photography world and video world, um, I was hiring grip companies that would come in and light for my photos and light for my video. Now, being a wedding photographer, lighting myself, being, you know, sponsored by this lighting company and doing like, I'm like, whoa, you're going to show me about lighting. But that was like, bro, they showed me some things about lighting. And I realized that nobody uses soft boxes and nobody uses umbrellas in that, in that world. It's all translucence. And the difference of the look of the light with translucence versus like, versus what you get out of a soft box, it's, it's really night and day. Right. It, 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 it does not look artificial at all. And another thing that changed the way I was thinking was if I'm shooting with continuous lights, then I don't need to use flash. And then there, when the videographer is doing his job, he's going to do it at the same time and I don't have to do it again. And so when we were doing our commercial projects, we we're moving so much faster. But the thing I was realizing is, is it took forever for them to set up to the next spot. 
And I was like, I would watch them literally with clamps and sandbags and these clipping frames and all of these things. And then they'd have to tear it all down and then move it to the other side of the hotel. And, uh, and when I, 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 when I, like the idea came to me to let's create this Hollywood, really like high quality style of lighting in a way that literally rolls up and rolls down and goes into a tube and it will and it literally will transform how you photograph because now before i would go into a bridal suite and be like okay where am i gonna go where am i gonna go where's the light oh my gosh it's raining out oh it's cloudy the sun's coming in coming out now i don't even think about it i'm like close the blinds i'm gonna create my own window right i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna create a natural light look that is never gonna change that's gonna have perfect cri right and then my cinematographer loves me my makeup artist loves me all of my second cameras and guys that I have shooting next to me, their work looks exactly like mine, right? <laughs> but, but, but what doesn't exist with the softbox and you can't do it is like our diffuser panels are, you know, 90 inches tall and they go from 36 to 60 inches wide, right? But they only have a footprint of this big. If I had a, you know, let's say a 48 inch by 90 inch softbox, the thing wouldn't be able to fit in a hotel room suite like where this hall. thing, Right, where this thing takes up about, a, it's got like a two inch, three inch footprint. Right, yeah. and then you don't, and you don't need the heavy sandbags and you don't need all of that extra equipment and you're just mo literally rocking it with a, a diffuser panel and one, and one light and yeah. you go from one location to the next. You don't even need to tear the thing down. You know, you just lower it and throw it in the elevator. And then when you're done with it on the event, we don't even tear it down. We just leave it up against the wall. Like no one sees it because it's like, you know, it's this thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Save your back, yeah. save all that energy. You know? Huh? Like save all that energy, all the wear and tear on your body from picking and, up. And you things. don't and you don't make excuses, right? You're not like, oh, the light's okay. It's like, well, listen, just grab the panel, put it up there. I got perfect light. Yeah. Wherever you yeah. want. Yeah. You know, and those which, panels are reversible too. I think on the panels you have a a black side and a white side or so actually yeah if you if you go to you know uh, uh it's uh lvlupimaging.com you'll be able to see that we have reflectors and the reflectors one side silver one side's white the tra and then we have white and black and then we also have translucence so our studio has like completely changed how it looks like we have nothing but just different panels that either reflect light or uh diffuse light or absorb light and you know we we work a lot easier with a much better result than we were getting using four and five lights mm, that's wonderful <laughs> yeah that's so great yeah because you can take that all of my photographer friends who are out there you know you don't have to go to a big studio to create big studio quality quality lighting and experience for your customers. Having a portable kit like that saves you a ton of money, small footprint, and you can probably do more jobs in a day or two than you could in a studio. And 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 you can and ready. All of our video content that we film for us, we use the level up to film it. Every time we do any types of interviews, we're using the light. We're using you know our stuff to create our content for our studio internally as well. So, you know, it's, it's super, it's super versatile because it isn't, you know, I, I have a zoom room in my office that has a 36 inch diffuser and a reflector, uh, and, and, a, and a couple of like Pablo tubes in the back to give me some like cool, like colored lights. And I've, I've, I've literally seen a number difference from phone consultation, from the phone consultation and zooms to when we move those to zoom only in a professional zoom uh, lighting situation where we're shooting through a digital SLR, our average booking went from 45% to 95%. Wow, that's a huge jump because of the Just, quality of work. They, well, when they like, I, like if if I wasn't at uh, the airport right now doing this, I would be in my Zoom room in my office. And what you know, you feel like you're watching somebody on YouTube. Like you actually see people when they get on the Zoom and they see you looking like really professional with great quality light. They actually like they pay attention more, right? They respect what you're saying more because you look professional even on their phone, right? So, you know, it's those little things that make a difference between booking the job and not booking the job. And it says a lot about you when they look at you and you look professional even when you're on a Zoom meeting, right? That 
they're like, well, look at these guys. Imagine what their stuff looks like. like this is just a Zoom meeting, right? So, you know, I think, um, you know, the way, the way that we light is pretty universal and it's very old school. It's literally how they were photographing a hundred years ago. Wow. Mimicking the sun, mimicking a good quality of sunlight. Right. And what clouds, light. yeah. And what clouds, you know, what clouds do, you know, and, and literally creating that north window light look anywhere you want. And another cool thing is, is you got a big panel, but you don't need to light up the whole thing. So that panel is every diffuser size from that one to all the way down to this. Just you move the light closer in and out and you change the size of your light source without changing the size of your modifier, which takes that one panel. Now that I don't need four soft boxes. The one does it for all of them. Yeah. Now, theoretically, doing it the old way or the way people do it today, moving that distance between the subject and the light determines if the light's going to be hard and soft. That's it. You're, you're, you're literally changing the quality of the light. And what's beautiful is, is when you're using continuous light, you don't have to guess. All you got to do is look at it and you can see the light change. You're, you can see the shadow to highlight transitioning training by, hey, move it in. Oh, right, right there. That's how I want it to look. And sometimes I want it to be a little bit more dramatic and hard. And sometimes I want it to be really soft and big. And I don't need to change anything other than slide the light forward or back. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Ty, yeah. I know you're in the airport. We have time for one final question. I don't want you to Let's miss go. your flight. Thank you for pushing the flight back just to do this for us. That's greatly appreciated. So thank you so uh, much. It, 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 it's, a, it's a super honor to be here. And, um, and, and, and again, anybody here listening, if there's anything that we can do, you know, so you can you can send us an email, send me a chat. If, if we can help, we're happy to help in any way. Awesome, awesome. Well, the final question is uh, from John Nader. So when you look in uh, creating a photography team and your members, what are you looking at? Um, how many members? I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure that this depends on the job. But what do you look for when you're creating a photography team? I'm assuming what he's saying is is not specifically for a specific job, but for creating a sustainable team. Yes. So it, it, it's all about heart. Right? Like I'm sitting here, and uh, you know, I got Santiago sitting here with me. Right? He's he's one of our he's one of our photographers, and um, I met him photographing his high school senior portrait. And when, when he, when he actually was in the room, there was something about him. I asked him if he wanted to wrestle. Oh, there he is. How you doing, Santiago? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> they said, what's up? So, um, you know, I saw, I, I saw the way he spoke is the way he was res respectful, the way he was like on it. And it, I was like, you know what, do you want to come to a wedding this weekend? And what, what we end up doing is, is, is if we have someone that we see, has a certain amount of drive, right? And passion for growth, along with wanting to be a part of a brotherhood, right? Or a family, like in our, in our situation and grow with us. You know, I, I feel that, that those commitments last way longer than the people that are picking jobs based on their salary. And when you get people to be, to buy in and believe in, in, in you and want, to grow and want you to help them grow and you want to help them succeed, then, you know, you're talking about building a ride or die team. You know what I mean? Like my, I'm, if I called my photographers and said, Hey, listen, we got to go bury something. I know that all of them would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ride or die team. Right. There. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so I, you know, it, it's really about the heart and, and, but you gotta, you have to, as a studio owner and leader know that you, you are a leader and, um, what you do matters and and people will see through fake so try to be a servant to the people that are working for you under you know try to help them and be there for them way way more than what a boss would be there for someone right awesome. because let's face it this ain't the type of job you can call in sick for right I want somebody that will get on the way to the job. I got shot in the leg, but it's okay. I got duct tape on it. I'll wait till the other guy gets here. You know, that's what I want. Right. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, Todd, you know, thank you so much for, for that, that. Thank you for inspiring and, and sharing your joy, your passion that you love to do for the world. You know, um, many photographers are trying to, to get to that level. 
and you're kind enough to share how you did it and that it can be done. So we greatly wow. appreciate you here, PP, for that. Well, I'm I'm very grateful for PPA for uh, being a being a supporter of mine and and really, you know, PPA is just as much of a reason that I'm a photographer today as my family is. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Well, we all family, your family. There too. you go, the PPA family. That's yeah. right. Here we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, Tom, thank you for well, your time. Everyone, thank you for joining us today in the chat. Thank you for your questions. We appreciate your support and your contributions. And Tom, I wish you a safe journey. Everyone thank you, thank there, you. You're very welcome. You guys stay inspired, stay, still keep creating, and um, I'll see you at the next Imaging Unpacked. Absolutely. All right, brother. Have a good one. Take it easy. You too. You too. And safe bye to everybody. Time. Thank you all for attending. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.